I'm going to take a few minutes here to just kind of do a little rant against the whole public school system and why it is not sustainable. Okay, and yet this applies to a Christian like myself or to just secular people. Uh, you need to start really thinking negatively about this whole system here. This system of the public school system, it is failing. It is a failed experiment. Um, the modern system of the big public school and the fleet of school buses that go around to pick up the children in the morning and you take them to the school and whatever else, it's not even 100 years old. I mean, public schools in the sense of the one-room schoolhouse and things, you can take that back, you know, probably 19th century sometime that that started to happen and whatever. But uh, this modern practice of public schooling, it is not, um, you know, economically sustainable. It is not environmentally sustainable. It is a terrible, terrible uh, thing that needs to end, quite frankly. I'm going to give you some reasons why. Um, as I said, the practice is not even 100 years old. Um, so, okay, it, it had its time to see if it would work or not, and it, it's not working. Let me t give you some reasons why. Number one, the buildings are poorly constructed and extremely hard to heat and cool. Uh, what is the average school building made out of? Concrete block. What is the worst insulating building material that's out there? Um, the lowest R value, in other words, uh, concrete block. And I mean, you got to build this, you know, what, 12,000 square foot building or something, and probably some even bigger than that. I don't even know. I'm just throwing a number out there. But obviously, multiple thousands of square feet of space so you can have a different room for math and a different room for English and a different room for music and, and you have to have the, the you know gymnasium and things it's big enough to have basketball and, so, and everything inside of it full basketball court and big big huge cafeteria and auditorium and all this stuff tremendous amount of money to build the thing and then you got to heat the thing in the winter time and here we're we're at in Aroostook County here in Maine um, you know, it's, it gets down to 40 below sometimes during the winter here. Um, how much money is going into keeping these school buildings, these big classrooms, cool? And you go down south and you have air conditioning in some of the schools and things. Again, is this, you know, they, they're in there preaching, um, you know, global warming and climate change and everything else, and we need to be more sustainable and, and have a lower carbon footprint while being in some huge, gigantic building. It doesn't make any sense. You talk about a carbon footprint, um, it's more like a carbon crater, you know, <laughs> that's created with them things. I mean, the, the amount of, of energy that's, that has to go into that building to, to maintain the climate and things, it's insanity. It's totally insane. And, the, you know, there's, there's uh, some in the area here, these school buildings, that after a while, they just abandon the thing. There's not enough people in the area and things, so they, they build these multi-million dollar buildings, and then they leave. And you got this big decaying building and I, again I've seen schools that have had to close because the you know cost of repair is more than it would cost to build a new building it's insanity it's an insane pra practice that has to stop it has to end regardless of whether you agree with homeschooling or online schooling or other alternatives to public schooling um, you have to admit yeah it's not a very good sustainable thing for the environment for the economy to have these huge big public school buildings it's ridiculous all right. Another thing here in this field here, there's a old abandoned school bus. Okay. Uh, look at the price of a new school bus sometimes or sometime. They're over a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. And I realize schools are not replacing them on a yearly basis and they don't replace all of them at once. Typically a school bus or a school will replace part of the fleet and then they'll wait a few years and they'll replace a little bit more and whatever else. Um, and then the ones that or junk, they'll go to a junkyard or, or whatever. Um, is that really a smart thing to do? You buy a $100,000 vehicle, you take it out on the road, how much does it cost to maintain the thing? How much fuel cost? I guarantee you these things are probably not getting probably less than you know 10 miles per gallon, probably more like five to seven miles per gallon, going around to pick up children to take them to this huge big building that's hard to heat. You see? It's insanity. And then taking them there to preach to them climate change. Absolutely crazy. Uh, peer pressure. 
I mean, again, let's let's look at the, let, look at this thing rationally, scientifically. You get a whole bunch of children together. How many of them are really actually learning there, or is it more about uh, social engineering? You see, that's what the reality of it is. I mean, you know, anybody that's been through public school. I went to public school, graduated back in 1994, and uh, it was social engineering. It's you know, what did I really learn from public schooling? I learned how to how to misbehave, how to get away with things how to get into bad habits and how to, you know, basically go out and be a, you know, a very rebellious vandalism type of, of a teenager. Why? Well, because I wanted to be in the in crowd. Peer pressure. You mean to tell me that every child that's in school is learning? No, they're not. Then they're not. And again, you know, you, I could even make the argument, and, and of course atheists wouldn't agree with this, and other people wouldn't agree, but I can say that a lot of the curriculum that's being taught to children in school is not even real. It's not even true. Evolution philosophy is one of those. Um, and there's a whole lot of other things that are taught to, to students in school that are, that are very outdated and should be eliminated. You know, it's absurd. Um, another point. Taxpayers like myself, are required to pay huge amounts of our, you know, property tax to the public school system to maintain this ridiculous $100,000 vehicle, multi-million dollar, you know, concrete block buildings to educate children. And I got to pay for that as a property owner. That's insanity. Here in Maine, it's actually 60% of the, the tax bill. The property tax that I have to pay, 60% goes to maintain this ridiculous nonsense. That's crazy. And again, you know, there are so many areas here and things where you see people and they've been here and, and whatever else, and all of a sudden they're, they're leaving their house and, and they can't afford their property tax anymore. They can't afford to make their payments. See, if you can eliminate the public school system, you are eliminating a very large chunk of money that needs to be come up with and things you could put the money towards other things it's insanity um, again another big thing upon graduation students are encouraged to get into more financial debt by going off to college someplace you know and and you know you'll say well do some of them work out yeah I'm sure some do I'm sure that there are some college students that go, or some high school students that go off to college someplace and they get a college degree and they're able to get a job in that chosen field and whatever else, but I would say the vast majority don't. Uh, I have met many young people that went off to some university because they were taught that in, in school. They were brainwashed into thinking that you get a college degree and you will be almost guaranteed a job. Almost guaranteed. And yet I've talked to many that can't find work. Knew of a young woman years ago, and she went off to an art school someplace. She came out, she had a $70,000 debt, student loan debt, $70,000, and she could not find a job of any kind, not just in her chosen field, any job at all. Had to move back in with her parents. And how many times is that repeated? And I know people that went on to professional medical degrees and things like that um, know of one my wife was telling me about. And she said that this woman went off, got a degree in dentistry, and she works as a dentist today, but yet she still has a quarter million dollar debt from her medical schooling to pay off. She got her job in the you know, thing that she went to school for, but yet she still is drowning in debt because of hyperinflation as well, by the way, I might add. You know, back in the 70s and things, you'd hear stories of, you know, young people going off to some college or whatever else, and they'd have a part-time job while they're going to school, and they'd pay off their student loan with a part-time job. Not gonna happen anymore. My grandfather, back in the early 1900s, he told me the one time he went to a Bible school and uh, paid his entire student loan off with a, with a one gold coin, like a $20 coin or something like that back in the old days, before, you know, the whole, uh, uh, thing of the, the um, Great Depression and then the, the gold being taken away and whatever else. Another big story. But the whole point is, that doesn't happen anymore. You can't just pay off your loan or your debt anymore. Another thing. You get all these hundreds of stu students coming into the school 
what are you going to do with them around noon? Uh, well, it's time for lunch. Go down to the cafeteria. Okay. Now, when they go down to the cafeteria, all of the students are fed organic, grass-fed meats, organic vegetables, organic fruits. They're fed the, the finest antibiotic-free, you know, <laughs> no, they're not. The school is going to buy the cheapest food that they can get in mass quantities to feed the children. So a child that's raised on a very good diet at home is going to go to school and be fed garbage. And of course, most children today are not being fed really good food at home. It's processed food and everything else. So you're also creating malnutrition among the youths. Whereas a child that's homeschooled or a child that is schooled online, there's not the big uh, tax bill, tax burden anymore on the parents. They can afford to buy better food. And the child's not going off to school someplace and having being forced by peer pressure to say, I don't want to just eat something that might actually be good for me because all the other children are eating the garbage here, the fast food garbage essentially. So I don't want to look weird, so I'm just going to eat what all the other children are eating. You know it goes on. It goes on all the time. That's why children get into drinking underage. That's why children get into drugs. That's why they get into smoking. How many children started their smoking, their alcoholic lifestyle, their drugs, illicit drug lifestyle. How many of them started it in high school? And it got worse when they went off to college. And they go into rehab and things like this. Oh, but the system's working. We can't get rid of the system of public schooling. It's insanity. So I think that's it for my different points here, but it just, just wanted to make a statement about that and just, you know, because it's something we, we talk about a lot my wife and I, she went through the whole college thing and her parents told her, you know, you will go to the college deal. And, you know, she went to public school, went to college afterwards. And uh, early part of our marriage, we had a student, you know, her student loans to pay off and things. And, and we worked hard to get it done. But uh, thankfully, she didn't have a huge student loan. But, you know, how many people do? Lots and lots and lots of people do. And there's so many things that you get older and you have to, you have to unlearn these lies that have been taught to you in public schooling. And yet we're continuing the system. We're continuing to do the same thing. Over and over and over again. We can barely, you know, we're, we're having to cut this and cut that so we can keep that public school thing going. And you see school buses driving by and half of them, they're, half the bus is empty. A few st students in there. But we got to keep it going. We got to keep the illusion going. Because we've been doing it for, what, since, you know, I don't even know when they started doing the school bus thing. Probably, what, 1940s, 1950s? Something has to change. And uh, whether or not people will do anything with this or, or whatever, I just thought it was necessary to get this truth out there. Uh, it needs to be re-looked at. Regardless of if you're a Christian or not a Christian or whatever, doesn't matter. It's a failed system. And people need to start realizing it and coming out of this, this dark age mentality that, you know, oh, this system is working and it's fine and it's good and we just got to keep it going. It's not working. It's a failure. Okay? So that is going to be it. I thank you for watching.